It's my pleasure and honor to introduce Dr. Bayoumi Ate, our speaker today in the second Provost Lecture Series for the academic year 2018-2019. Uh, we wanted to have an expert opinion on one of the most critical issues uh, facing Egypt, that's water, and there are so many angles to handle water from it uh, uh, in half an hour or in, in, in a short uh, uh, talk, uh, we thought looking at like the big picture and with a special focus on uh, policy side of things, uh, uh, Dr. Bayoumi Ateya has been in the water arena for such a long time, advising the Ministry of Water Resources uh, for almost 40 years. So we are going to benefit a lot from having his views on the big picture of water and the uh, issues related to. Uh, policy making and the advisory that uh, an, a policy maker need to have. So uh, thank you very much, Dr. Adair, for being with us, and the earphone is yours. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really, really very pleased to be here in this place. And actually, I'm honored to be a speaker to such an intellectual group of professors, researchers, and students. Thanks to the kind invitation from Professor Dr. Ihab Abdurrahman, the Provost, and Dr. Ala Idris, Associate Prophet, Provost. Let me tell you that this is the first time I visit the university. I visited the university in its old place several times as a student and as a speaker. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, really very pleased. Second, I'm pleased that I will talk about a very critical issue. I call it very complicated, which is water resources management in Egypt. The title is very attractive. Opportunities for securing water in Egypt. I selected this title, and I know that it will attract a lot of people. But actually, maybe the opportunities are not as you will imagine or think. And we will see. First of all, I would like to transfer a message to all the audience. Usually, I am asking my audience to, 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 to put a, a question in their mind. Uh, two weeks, three weeks ago, I was lecturing in the Cairo Water Week, and I was uh, chairman for a session about climate change in Egypt. So I told them in the first beginning, do you believe that climate is changing? Please take this question and put it in your mind. And after the session, we will ask you whether you are convinced now about there is a changing in the climate. Today, I will not do this, but I'm asking you, do you believe that we are in Egypt in a problem concerning water resources or not? So put this question in your mind. And before I speak, I wanted to transfer a message I consider this message very important. By the way, I have inflammation in my throat since yesterday. So please, please, don't ask me to sing, because I will, I cannot. Uh, let us start by the message which I want to uh, transfer to you. As I said, our subject today 
is about water resources and its management. Speaking globally, the world is entering a period of growing water scarcity. This is a hard fact. The world is entering an epoch or a period of growing water scarcity. UNEP estimate that by 2030, means after 12 years, which is a very short period, global demand for water could outstrip supply by over 40% if and only if no change in management are made. The growing demands, and this is very important, which I, this is the message which I want to transfer. The growing demands placed on our supply of water are not merely the result of the growing rate of population. Not only it's a result of the growing population, but the way in which our economics developed. The problem is in our way we develop uh, economics. Egypt, of course, has a, I don't know if this word this is correct or that sluggish uh, uh, economy, lazy economy, and that's why we have why the water problem is more complicated. Actually, many of the problems we are entering or we are encountering in our use of water are either economic, social, and political in character. Our problems lie <clears throat> under these three uh, subjects, economics, social, and political. This means that it is within our power to change the structures governing water use and prepare more seriously for our current and future needs. So this is a little bit some green light that because it is not the problem of the water sector and for example a lot of people thinks, think that, uh, for example, the Ministry of Water Resources and Irrigation can solve the problems of water. And this is a big mistake. Ministry of Water Resources and, and, uh, and Irrigation cannot. I worked in the ministry up till I was uh, first under Secretary of State, and I was the establisher of many things in, in this ministry. And I'm telling you that the ministry cannot alone solve the problem of water, especially in Egypt. And this is what we will talk in details later on. Uh, continuing, but these, those, as I said, needs are complex. As I said, we need to uh, work in economics and social and political. These are complex as they involve nearly all the sectors. And when we are talking simply that the water problem will, be, will not be solved inside the, the water sector itself, we say that it's good that it is in the uh, economics and the social and political, so we, have, we may have the power to solve it. But the, 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 the thing is not simple like that, because 
These needs are complex as they involve nearly all the sectors of our economy, society, and government. So, a lot of players, a lot of partners are contributing in this. These in <clears throat> involved, those involved includes politicians and administrators at all levels of the government, as well as a host of private industries and enterprises of all sizes, making water as obvious economic resource. I hope that I'm, I'm, I'm trying now to, 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 to send the message and to tell you that solution of the water problem in Egypt is not easy and it's not the job of the engineers, it's not the job of Ministry of Water Resources or some ministries around it. It is a problem of the whole country with all the economic sectors, with all the private sector and all this. What I am talking about now is what the UNEP published two years ago in a, a, a very, very, very important uh, publication. They published this and they uh, created a method to the, the, the people of management of water sources. This method or, or this uh, approach is called decoupling. Decoupling. In Arabic, it is fasl. Fasl, uh, what we can say, it is fasl, it's, it's, it's a good translation. And this emphasizes <clears throat> that we want to decouple the economic growth from the use of the resource. This is a very big uh, problem, not problem. It's, it's, it's something needs a lot of, of, of work. And the UNEP, two years ago, started this new uh, uh, approach, which we call D coupling, meaning that <clears throat> we should compare with what we want to achieve. Are we achieving, or are we aiming to raise the economic growth or are we aiming to use the limited resource what we have? In Egypt, for example, Dr. Mohammed Abdel the Minister of water resources and irrigation, announced it two years ago, announced it several times. By the way, Dr. Mohammed Abdullahi is my colleague, and I'm, I'm older than him too much, but, but we have the same school of thinking. He said that we have a water shortage in this country, and we estimate it in the in our work, to be more than 22 million meter cubic a year annually. This means that we move now from the era of abundancy to the era of shortage and poverty. This is very, very important. Uh, when I said 22 million meter cubic, this is apart from or aside from the virtual water of the imports, because we import some commodities, and these commodities means that we are importing water. If we are not importing wheat, if we are not importing other things, other crops, then the figure will not be 22 million, it will be much, much, much more than that. This means that we have a serious issue about our water resources. Definitely today, 
we don't have time to talk about all the problems of water. But I will try to summarize the water system, water source system, as we should know, and to see what is the, the major features of this system, and then we move, if we will speak about opportunities, then we should speak about challenges. So we will talk about the first to the, uh, uh, we will talk about the system, its structure, its features, and then we will talk about the uh, challenges, and then later, at the end, we will talk about the opportunities. This is the contents of the, we, we will start by the presentation now. I hope that I, I didn't take too much time in the first, but I think this introduction for me and for you was very, very, very important. Dr. Ahmed, uh, okay, okay. Uh, the, the presentation content, as I said, particular features of the water sy system and the system inputs and outputs, then the challenges, then the opportunities. Uh, the particular features of water, first, we should know that the system of water resources in Egypt is almost unique in the world. I think we have in the world 196 countries. You will not find three or four countries like the position or the situation of Egypt. Egypt has one single unique source of fresh water, one. And it has 97% of its water coming from outside, outside the borders, outside the political borders, outside the, the geographical borders from Ethiopia uh, Plateau and Equatorial Lakes. So this is number one in the features of the water resources. We don't have any source. Some people will tell me that we have uh, sea and we have uh, groundwater and, uh, and these things. We will talk about this. Uh, Egypt, according to an international agreement, which is 1959 between Egypt and Sudan, has annually 55.5 million meter cubes, and Sudan has 18.5 million cubes. 55.5, this is all our quota from the River Nile annually. In the Nile Basin, in the Nile Basin, we are 11 countries are sharing the water of the River Nile, 6,000 kilometers. And some features of this basin that this, the discharge of water is very modest, very modest in this. There are different topographies and there are some features of the Nile Basin itself. We will not talk too much about this, but we want to know, or I want to, you to know, that we are sharing 10, then the countries in the water basin, in the Nile River Basin, is 11. High Aswan Dam is a multi-year regulator helped Egypt to guarantee this 55.5. Without high Aswan Dam, we cannot guarantee that we will have the 55.5. So I, I was lucky. I, I graduated 
1964, and that was the first beginning of operation of the High Aswan Dam. So, and I, I uh, contributed in the uh, uh, calculation of its contents, which is one sixty-eight milliards, and I contributed in estimating the life storage capacity, flood relief capacity, and also this needs another uh, uh, lecture. Below head, below High Aswan Dam, the water resource system in Egypt is 100% regulated below High Aswan Dam. We have big barrages, we have all the infrastructure, right? And if we compare us with the 10 other countries, we are much, much, much in, uh, advanced in, in this. Uh, by the way, I told Dr. Ala that uh, you will forgive my modest English, Yani. So please, Yani, don't uh, don't stick to the, what I'm saying, whether it is gramma grammatically wrong or, or something like that. So still, we are in the features. I just remind you by the uh, high Aswan Dam. This is a picture of the Aswan Dam. And let us speak about the very, very important feature. This is the, the most important feature of the water resource system. UNO's systems realize that we are defining the system with inputs and outputs, right? There is another classification which is Closed systems and open systems. I will not speak in, in fluid mechanics and I will not go to, into to the very complicated uh, uh, equations. But just I wanted you to know the water source system in Egypt is a partially closed system. What means partially closed system and why I mention this? Partial closed system means that it is a system which needs very, very high cost and financial resources to operate it. And also the water inside the partial or the, the closed system is circulated. So we have two disadvantages in the closed systems or partially closed system that it needs a lot of financial resources to maintain and operate and most important that it uh, preserves or, or uh, yani it's, it preserves the, 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 the pollution the, the, the pollutants yani the, the pollutants are kept a lot lot of time and it is difficult to get rid of it. Those, these are two. Of course, there is some advantages. In the advantages of the, the, the closed system, it has what we call a high global efficiency. High global efficiency. Because efficiency can be classified in many, many categories. Global, local and effective. We will not talk about this in details. Just to tell you something about closed and open. Very, very simple, simple explanation. The open system has the output. We said that we are speaking about system. Output of the closed system, the, the open system, water which can be used. The closed system will have non-usable water or zero. And in Egypt, we have the output is the drainage water which we 
spilled to the sea. And this drainage water, most of it is saline, and we cannot use it. So we call the system of Egypt a partially closed, and it's very, very, very much to be closed. Okay? Regional and efficiency and global efficiency. I said this. The, 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 the advantage of the uh, closed system that it has global efficiency. Suppose, suppose that I have two plots of water. The first plot has an input of 50 units and an output of Uh, uh, has a hundred units as input and evapotranspiration, eva you know, evapotranspiration, and evapotranspiration 50, and the rest is 50. If we compute this mathematically, then the efficiency is about 50%. If the output from the first plot goes to the second plot and the evapotranspiration is 25 and the rest is 25, then it is also 50% as a calculation of the efficiency. If you put them together and consider the input 100 and the output 25, then the global efficiency is 75. This is not a buzzer, but this is the mistake what we always lie in. If you ask the, 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 the people working in, in the water sources about the efficiency of the, our system, they will tell you that it is 75, 80. But this is not, is false. The, the, the local or the farm efficiency is less than 50. But because it is closed system, and because the recycling, then the global efficiency go, goes up. There is another, <clears throat> there is another no, uh, uh, type of efficiency, I will not go in details about it, which is effective efficiency. Just I give you very, very slight hint about this. Suppose, suppose you are dealing with uh, a situation where you obtain, calculate the efficiency to be consumptive use over delivery. So, as we said in the plot, you have 50% evapotranspiration, and you have, for example, the delivery, delivers water with 100. Think about what I'll, I will say. Suppose the, the evapotranspiration goes up till 100. What will be the efficiency in this case? 100%. 100%. Which is unlogic. This is number one. Number two, in, in, the, in the calculation of the traditional efficiency, we are neglecting at all water quality. We are using the quantity only. So all the researches since how long? Since 20 years, not now. They said that there is something called now effective efficiency. with big uh, equation and this is, this is not our... Uh, subject. Again, are you following me? Again, I, I want to just give you very, very quick the system, the source system, the inputs and the outputs. The inputs are three. Rainfall, which is very, very small, 1.3 million meter cubic. 
release from high Aswan Dam, which is release from the high Aswan Dam. How much? How much? 55.5, right? And some uh, uh, deep groundwater. We have groundwater, shallow, and we have deep. The, the deep groundwater is non-renewable. But we try to uh, uh, use some of it, which is a very small number. In, 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 in conclusion, the input of the uh, water source system in Egypt, if you, were, if you wanted to make water balance, is about 50 8.5 or 59 million meter cubic. The output. What is the output? I would like to, yeah, not to take much time about this because this is very, very uh, specialized. Consumptive use, which is the beneficial output. Drainage to sea. Non-recoverable, municipal and industrial. I just give you a very, yani, very small example. The, 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 we, we transpire, right? This transpiration goes to the atmosphere, right? It will not come again to the system. So we say this is non-recoverable losses. Okay? And this is one example of it. We have also, of course, we have thousands, thousands of kilometers of canals and drains, and this evaporates, so we have also non-recoverable loss, which is the over evaporation from the free surfaces of canals and drains and other tributaries. And at the end, the change of the groundwater, the shallow groundwater change, because we are taking, uh, you know, we, we, we are charging from the shallow groundwater, so we have five outputs and we have three inputs. The three slides, I'm, I'm just giving a details which you, you may not care about, the percentages and the uh, Usually, usually, we uh, we make uh, 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 there is a misleading between uh, the uh, deliver delivery and the consumption or depletion. This is very very important. So we have what we call consumption, and we have. Uh, deliveries or water use, what we, what, what we give to the land. This is what we call delivery or the water use. Consumption is what is the beneficial losses from this delivery. So, to, to have an idea, our water delivery is more than 85 million meter cubic. This is what we give the, to the, the land. Our consumption is 58.5 or 59. All the numbers I give here don't stick too much to it because it's not updated. Because there is something very nice now in the ministries that they consider all this information confidential and secret. And this, uh, I was not used about this when I was in the ministry. For example, you cannot know now the, the level of the high Aswan Dam every, every day. When I was in the, the ministry, we publish every day in the newspaper the level of the high Aswan Dam. Every day. Now they consider this secret, official, it's a secret, confidential. Don't ask about it. Even me, even me to me, it is confidential. So we don't need to go in details in this, but this is very, very important. You should really 
يعني put some attention about this. Why I'm giving you this? To tell you that it is a closed system. Why a closed system? Because it is a a lot of it has a lot of recycling, lot of recycling, and and it 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 is very very clear here that our system, water source system, has subsystems. The subsystems is agriculture, industry. Navigation, municipalities, and other things, very very tiny. So, actually, in 1987, we designed the system, the water system. I was in this uh, at that time in the, in the ministry. We designed this as a computer model, very simple computer model. We want to talk to the minister and to the, 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 the old people, and we tell them that if you follow the circulation of the water, means that something goes from agriculture, go to the uh, drainage. So from the drainage goes again to the, the canals, which is the recycling, and we put the equation, the mathematical equation. At the at the end, and this we we put it by figures. Yeah, sigma input equals sigma output when there is a balance and we have no shortage. And if we have shortage, then we have imbalance. And this model very very simple. And uh, yeah, a student in in secondary schools can can go and run it always. To know whether we have shortage or not, associated associated with this, there is what we call salt balance. You cannot five minutes. Can can you give me more five minutes? Two minutes. So. Water balance and salt balance. It is typical. The, 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 the two the, the two figures are typical. What means salt balance? Salt balance means that the water which releases from the Aswan Dam has some salt load. And by this figure, we follow the salt load up till it goes to the Mediterranean Sea. How can we calculate the salt load? It is the discharge. This is something engineering. And discharge multiplied by the concentration of suspended waters. If you multiply this, you will get the figure in million tons. Uh, Doctor Hala, it's uh, impossible that I will. Okay. Uh, I have two things to, to 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 talk about now. Water source challenges. First, we will agree about all increasing the population. Increasing the population means demand more demand, and with the same supply, then this is a, sh a challenge we are facing in Egypt. The second, which is related to the first, the gap between. Supply and demand. The third, inadequacy or available available governmental investment. I said in the first beginning that the system is closed system or partially closed. This means that we need lot of budget, lot of financial resources to make the operation and to make the maintenance. The government didn't give this water. Uh, with this financial resource, every minister, every year, complains that the budget is not enough, right? So this is one of the challenges. And you know, in the in the in the, in the, in the way of management, we use the approach of cost recovery, means that the government or the official. Organization 
will build and the user will pay the cost but over a long time. This is what we call a cost recovery. This is very, very important, very important, but it is very low and it is a challenge in, in Egypt. Of course, we have pollution because we are recycling, because we use, recycle the drainage water, we recycle the wastewater, we recycle the uh, 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 all, all this will be recycled and it needs uh, 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 treatment treatment and treatment has its uh, many many uh, stages and I think there is no enough resources in the country or in the government to pay to the good or the third type of the treatment laws and legislation side is very 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 important in the management of water and we have very old laws, laws uh, up till now to manage the water, our water, water resources and we I, I, I think I retired from the ministry to 2001 and we are now 2018 and we prepared the water resources low for uh, for Egypt since that time and up till now it has not been recognized by the parliament this is just uh, just something I, I'm telling you and this is uh, uh, also a challenge governance governance Al-Hawkama we have very low governance very low governance no good participation, no, uh, no good... Uh, there are nine elements of the governance. I think we are very, very poor in applying them in our system. Uh, this is something... Uh, and there is misleading or, or, or misunderstand of the, these two things. We will not take time on this. But we... I, I, I just mean to tell you that there is classical efficiency, there is effective efficiency, there is regional efficiency, there is overall efficiency. These things are not taken into consideration in our management here, but it is now in all, all over the world. The question now, after we have now some idea about the system, its features and the challenges. Do you think that we have some hope or aim to uh, uh, have or to think about opportunities to secure the water for Egypt? The answer to this question is affirmative. Okay? You, you stand means that I should, I should go outside. Okay. Okay. Ask them if, 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 if they are interested, keep them. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is the opportunities which I wanted to tell you about for securing water. First, we should increase our water use, means that we should increase recycling. This has disadvantages and advantages, but we are obliged to do that. There is also uh, exploitation of groundwater, shallow groundwater in the Nile Valley, we should increase this. All this needs financial resources, by the way, a lot of financial resources. We have also now, we are obliged to reuse the treated wastewater. And, and of course, you know the effect of this on the health, on the health of the Egyptians, and this is another problem. We have harvesting of flash floods. We have a lot of, of, of rains and we waste this and we can do some engineering projects and infrastructure to make use of the, these flash floods. Review of the existing laws and, and decrees. This is also from the opportunities. Use of 
modern technologies in water resources management, restructuring the Ministry of Water Resources and Irrigation. The, the Ministry of Irrigation has been established in 1853, and still the departments are the same, not, not almost yani, the same, but still yani, it needs immediate restructuring and <clears throat> protection of public health and the environment. These are opportunities. Uh, I was planning to speak about every item of this. I will not do this. Don't don't worry. I I will not do this, because every every item of this needs another lecture. These are the items which I. Uh, Sorry, sorry. Of course, the opportunity we have, and it seems that it became, it becomes difficult, is the cooperation with the other ten countries of the River Nile Basin. So, we have many, many opportunities, many opportunities to do some projects in the Nile Basin, but we don't have the, uh, the atmosphere and the environment to help us in this. And an example is Sadd al Nahda, uh, is one of these examples. But another example by which I'm telling you, sorry, When I worked in the, water, the, the Ministry of Water Resources and Irrigation, and this is, as I said, 1964, we were talking about four conservation projects. This is since 60s. Up to now, they didn't do. We, we didn't. We we didn't succeed to do it. We have very obvious conservation projects which will help us. Will help Egypt and Sudan with no, not less than nine milliards a year. The name, I just will tell you the name of these projects. We have Jongli, one and two, which has been destroyed by the people there in this area. We have uh, Bahr el-Ghazal, Bahr el-Ghazal. This is uh, uh, a watershed which has a lot of rain, rain, and we, and all most of these rains are lost in the evaporation and swamps in the area, and we have also what we call mashar marshes. These are projects which have been studied. The most project which has been de in depth studied is the what we uh, I mentioned, Jongli Canal, and we wanted to have. Conclusions. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. There, are, uh, there are two reasons for uh, one. One reason is that the, probably some of the uh, audience would have classes starting at two, so we want to give them a chance to go to their classes if they have uh, ones. But the other one is that we still have an opportunity for having like a 10 to 15 minutes uh, questions and answers for those who are not really like, uh, do not need to rush for, uh, uh, for their class or appointments. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Dr. Bayoumi, this is a very informative lecture, and I wish you had more time to talk about opportunities. Because in international relations, we talk about water and national security, and the potential water wars. So it becomes a very important problem internationally. I wish we had time. I, I hope that the lecture would be on the website. Yeah. Uh, given the time, I have two small questions. One, you talked about 
water scarcity, and I know that the UN has a ranking system about water stress and different degrees. Is water shortage inevitable? Or is water shortage sure? inevitable? Oh, yeah, yes. Or is technology helping? Number two, with Ethiopia, do we have to go to war to guarantee our water resources? Number three, and that is the end, Egypt is actually a peninsula. It has the Red Sea and the Mediterranean. Can desalinization be a solution to the water problem? I will, I will forget what. <laughs> well, you mentioned correctly that the problem is multidimensional, economic, social, and political. Uh, in April, I was in Rwanda, Kigali, and I heard the former Prime Minister of Ethiopia talking. Uh, he resigned, as you, as you know, uh, because he said that he can do more while he's outside the office than from inside the office. And he really uh, think that Egypt is very non-cooperative, completely different from the side of the surat I hear here. And I fail to reconcile the two sides of the stories. Do you have any intake on that? Egypt is not, is not cooperating. Not cooperative. Not cooperative. At all. In Arrogant. In which Arrogant, way? Arrogant, not cooperative. Uh, uh, he gave a one hour lecture, so mm. I just... You know, and I will, I will I'm take talking about the political answer. side of the issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, since I was a kid, I was always told that the problem is the Egyptian people who are do not preserve water. Do, they always pollute it. I think since the pharaohs, when somebody is polluting the water, he will be punished. We all know that as a fact, and we heard about Gongli. I, I studied it when I was a sixth grade student. So all this are the past. We are in need to talk about the future because this is for our children. And, and I, I'm, I'm stressing on the same question. Do we have to go to war and to, to preserve or to uh, secure our water resources? Or it's just, uh, so I see it, if I, if I am allowed, it is outside Egypt. This is the, the main problem, not inside Egypt. We've been, we know the problem, we know how to reserve water, but still there is a large shortage and it's going to continue. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bayoumi, for this very timely lecture, and I want to also thank Provost Ihab and Dr. Adris for inviting you to AUC. I just wanted to let you know that your talk is so very timely because my students and I are currently immersed in an entire semester discussing the Nile River Basin, transboundary water rights, water resource management, and of course, water security for Egypt. They've learned a great deal. Initially, I was a bit reluctant. I thought I would quote, drown them in too much discussion about water. But uh, many of my students were present and they have received a confirmation about the importance of water. And I gather my question for you is, given the challenges, the, the economic, the social and political that you have so clearly outlined is, do you think that we could take an approach of water literacy? Do you think it would be important to educate all Egyptian citizens about their need to be active participants in water resource management, since you very clearly stated in the earlier aspects of your talk that it will not only take engineers to preserve water resource management. It's going to require the entire country, and we're talking predominantly about the citizens of the country. And certainly, I do hope that given the knowledge that we're gaining about water resource management, that certainly the conflict involving the construction of the Grand Renaissance Dam in Ethiopia and the other countries that share the Nile River, that there will be a peaceful resolution that can be met. Thank you. My problem is that I forgot all the... <laughs> <laughs> See, you can answer my question because it's the last one. Uh, okay, now, finished? That's the last one.
Yes, sir. You yes, talk sir. about social, political, and economic factors. But you, but you, you, you did not talk about cultural factors. Because Again, please. Again. Cultural factors. Cultural. cultural. What mm. role do you think cultural factors play in the Egypt's water future? Mm. Mm. Uh, Dr. Bayumi, thanks for giving us this lecture today from your time. And uh, it's a short question. Uh, in the opportunities section, you mentioned a lot of opportunities, such as water reuse and groundwater exploitation and desalination. My question is, which opportunities do you think the ministry is planning to invest in in the short future to, sol to start solving our problem? Thank you. Start. Uh, I think there is common uh, questions. Uh, I will start by the. I will start by the problem of Sad uh, Nahda, and uh, I'm used in any place I go to talk about water resources. They will ask me about the Sad Nahda and whether this will be a reason to have a war between Egypt and, and, uh, and uh, Ethiopia. Definitely, definitely, war is not a solution. This is yeah, and something which we should all yeah, and convince about. War is against uh, the Egyptian situation. But at the same time, we said that Politics can play some role, and convincing the Ethiopian part with the disadvantages of what they are doing now is another thing. I will tell you the, the most important problem in this uh, uh, reservoir, the important problem that there is no transparency. I was within the co the committee, which we, which was discussing the problem at the first beginning, and we have some foreign consultants and scientists, and uh, it was a very intellectual group, and we asked them, we want the design, we want the 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 the, the information, we want. We didn't have enough information. It's still, it's still up to now. We don't know whether this reservoir will fail. There is, there will be a failure to this reservoir or not. If you ask me, and this is an engineering question, yeah, there is something called uh, 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 security factor, and we asked about the security factor from uh, Ethiopia and they didn't give us. So, so there are a lot of information we need and we don't have. Even now, I heard that they now succeeded with some ex countries that they will, we, they will not give us the opportunity to have satellite pictures for the site and the reservoir and they do some interruption or corruption so that we will not have these images to, to, to get the information. I know that I didn't answer your question. I answered it definitely that I'm against the war and war is against Egypt and the second thing is that is it a problem, this reservoir? Yes, it is a problem. This is definite. But there are a lot of solutions. And solutions can come with cooperation. And cooperation is not there. So without cooperation, without the understanding each other, yeah, I, I remembered that 
in uh, before before I leave the, the ministry, uh, the, the 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 first design of Sad the Nada was 14 million meter cubic. This is what Bureau of Reclamation in the in the states did for Ethiopia. They 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 put a plan uh, for Ethiopia with 33 reservoirs. One of them is Border Dam, which is now Sad the Nada, and the as I said to you, they started by 14 milliards, and I was the one who did the study. Is this is will this affect Egypt? And we said no, and we will cooperate, and we will do whatever you ask us to do, and go ahead and do it, and generate electricity and power, whatever they like. Then they upgraded to 16. Then they upgraded to 63. Then they up upgraded to 74. This is something which you, which you, you cannot uh, yani, yani say that the solution is, is easy, right? We wanted to know, we, we wanted to have a commission to, to, to operate this uh, reservoir, like Mekong Commission. There are a lot of examples in the world with, with few countries. We, they are operating a river or, or an infrastructure on this river. So, this is number one. Uh, measures of scarcity and aridity, right? If I, if I, you said that there is levels of scarcity, scarcity and the, three, three expressions you should know. What we call aridity, aridity, in, in, in Arabic, qohula, Scarcity means nudra and drought. And all these three, we are practicing here in Egypt, the three. The aridity index is very, very high in Egypt because we are a desert. We are a desert. And we have been classified by the UN, by a scientist called Beverly Meg, that we have, we are hyper arid country. Hyper arid country. The index of aridity is that you have precipitation and you have the consumption or the uh, water use. In Egypt, you don't have precipitation inside, inside the country. So we are not, not medium arid or low aridity. We are hyper arid. A scarcity, now we can say that we are scarce, but scarcity is some, something relative. It is relative to the demand. Yeah. If you have the demand more than the supply, then you have a scarcity situation. In the, in the, drought, in, in the drought, we have a good example of drought in Egypt from year 1979 to 1986, where we have a very long uh, drought period, where we were obliged to lower the level of the uh, contents of the high Aswan Dam and to make some decrease in the quota of our water from 55.5 to 30, 53 millions. This was 10 years of drought. So I mean, Egypt is a very good example for the three kind of shortage or poverty, the aridity and the scarcity and drought, okay? Am I asking, uh, am I answering the question or not? Not. I was talking about the UN system which is now La, no, no, but, but I did, I told you that according to the UN classification in 1953, we are hyper-arid. Is this a, a classification or not? Right? No, the, the, the number two. I, with, with my knowledge, I don't know this uh, classifications about scarcity. For example, scarcity is relative. You, you, if you have 
low, lot of demand, right, and less supply, then you have scarcity, and it is it is relative, okay. Draft uh, the, the 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 other one, which which uh, the drought, we have records since two hundred years, and we know the 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 periods of uh, drought, which are many in Egypt. But up till my uh, according to my knowledge, I don't know specifically this classification. I know exactly the classification of the UN of 1953, which is the uh, uh, hyper-arid country. What else? I, I want to... The third question was... I, 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 I forget... Uh, Definitely, the desalination is an opportunity. This is definite, number one. Number two, it is expensive. Up till now, the, 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 the price for desalination of desal, make desalination for one meter cubic is coming less now, but still it is uh, uh, expensive. And it, it will be suitable for the area on the shores, because you will not uh, uh, trans uh, uh, transmit this water to, uh, to, to the depths in, in Egypt. So desalination is one of the most important uh, uh, opportunity, but it is not the whole solution of the problem. Definitely, it is not the solution. Harvesting of water may be also a good uh, opportunity for us to do. All what I am saying that it needs a holistic plan from all the country, from all the, the sectors to speak about this and to, to, to restructure the uh, budget, the budget of the country. It's, it's, uh, it's very, very, very expensive and very difficult to achieve. Uh, Cultural fact. Uh, actually, we uh, are facing a very big problem that the Egyptians think that we have plenty of water. And we are now uh, exerting a lot of effort to convince the, the people that we are in a shortage period. So, a great effort uh, is done to change the culture that we don't have abundance, we have shortage, and uh, it needs time and it needs uh, uh, effort and it needs uh, other uh, specialization to, to talk about this. And money, of course, this is everything. The, the Minister of the Water Resources and, uh, and Irrigation now is putting a lot, a lot of importance and attention to raise the, uh, uh, the awareness of, of the people in Egypt about water. You can see now programs in the, on the TV. You can see a lot of effort are, are being done now. We want to create now some good uh, some new ideas about our water resources we are not a country which is rich in in water this is definite we are desert and we should uh, uh, behave having this fact thank you very much for your uh, um, questions and for the thank you thank you